resources and they tolerate one another and in some ways they may even help each other. So ravens will lead bears to carcasses and bears will cut open those carcasses for the ravens. So it's a little bit of a give and take relationship. They don't bug them, the bears don't chase them. They do live and tolerate one another. Some other examples of that sort of relationship actually includes uh, ravens and wolves as well and humans and dogs and humans and cats. So it's present among several different species. So Cobalt and Akina, uh, they are from Delta Junction, Alaska, which is the interior of Alaska that makes them a little bit bigger than our Montana grizzly bear, but a little bit smaller than our coastal Alaskan grizzly bear named Sam. Right now they are putting on weight for the winter. That's called hyperphagia. So they're eating like crazy right now. They're completely and entirely food obsessed. You may not see them interact very much. That's because the only thing on their mind is food. Our bears here at the center do not hibernate. They do not need to hibernate. Cobalt just shook a bird feeder out of that tree over there. We'll talk about that in just a minute, but to carry on with that thought, hibernation is an adaptation developed only out of necessity. Even wild bears will not hibernate if they have food. So as long as we provide our bears with food, they will not hibernate. You know, Cobalt did just shake that bird feeder out of that tree. Um, that is something that we do in order to stimulate our bears as well, as well as show how good they are at getting into human food sources. So bird feeders are very, very popular among bears. Hummingbird feeders, dog food, cat food, garbage, um, anything you can think of, cooking grease, perfume, anything like that that you leave, out, leave outside will lead a bear to your area and that's extremely dangerous. Uh, it can lead to something called habituation which explains why our bears are actually here at the center for the most part. A habituated bear is a bear that is used to people, and that's not actually a good thing. Uh, bears will start seeing humans as different species of animals that compete for the same food sources, and that's when they become dangerous. So most of our bears are here because uh, they had some sort of interaction, repetitive interaction with humans, um, yeah. and had to come live in captivity or otherwise be euthanized. You may see our bears grazing on the grass. They are omnivores, eating a diet of about 80% produce to 20% protein here at the center. Right now, they're eating between 15 and 20 pounds of food and up to 20,000 calories. Again, they are putting on that weight for the winter. You also may have seen our keepers doing some strange stuff with the trees. All of our trees are superficially planted. They're planted on spikes, kind of like Christmas trees if you go to pick them up uh, from some store. Uh, they will be planted on those spikes. Uh, we do that because when we opened 20 years ago, we were a naturally forested uh, habitat for our bears, but it was completely destroyed within a week. Kobuk especially, his hobby is shaking trees, kind of breaking them in half. Um, and so it's very easy. Sam will actually lift trees out of their spikes so they can ruin these areas very quickly. Uh, by superficially planting, uh, we just have a little more control in that area, as well as the fact that we're able to mix things up a little bit for our bears, give them new things to explore. We do have a pond in there. Our bears, our wolves, and our bald eagles all get rainbow trout here at the center. It's donated to us by the hatcheries. 